This series is sponsored by Linode. Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site or project in the cloud. Whether you're a Linux power user or just a beginner, you can use Linode. You can start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy game servers, WordPress websites, personal VPNs and much more. You can even upload and run your own image. You can get $20 free on your new Linode account with the code HACKESPLOIT20 or by clicking the link in the description. That is linode.com forward slash HACKESPLOIT. Hey guys, welcome back to the Linux Essential Series for Hackers. In this video, we're going to be talking about networking uh, in the command line. All right, so let's get started now. Um, if you pretty much watched uh, any of my older videos, where we were working with networking within the Linux terminal, you know that I would typically use the IF config uh, utility. However, uh, you know, the standard has changed now and uh, what we have to use or what is the preferred method of uh, getting information and interacting with various network interfaces is by using the IP command, right? So the IP uh, utility allows you to, you know, show manipulate routing net network devices, interfaces and tunnels, etc. All right, so let's get started by first of all um, understanding how to display your current uh, routing table. So again, we can do that by typing in IP route show, and uh, that's very simple. So IP route show, and this will show you your current uh, routing table. So you can see this is my uh, this is uh, this is currently my router's IP address or my gateway. Uh, this is my interface name here, and this is the source IP, which is my IP address. So that gives you an idea of uh, of your IP routing table uh, currently. Now, again, you can take a look at, uh, we can grep route here and uh, th in the man pages, and you can take a look at all the options you have available for you. Um, so you can pretty much change the route if you want to do, but of course that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. I'm simply showing you how to find information that's very useful. If you want to display your current IP address, we type in IP uh, ADDR and we hit enter. And this gives you your two interfaces. So we have local. Uh, this is a loop back. Uh, so this is, you know, for your local host. Uh, and you then have your uh, Ethernet. In my case, my Ethernet adapter, which has the interface name ENP2SO. Uh, you can see that it has an IP of uh, 192.168.1.101. And you have the, uh, the, entire, uh, the entire network range there. Um, you also have your uh, your IPv6 IP address here if that is required, and of course you have your MAC address. So very similar to IF config. Um, so if we if we take a look at IF config, which is a, a perfectly great uh, tool that you can use, and uh, so you know you can use it. If I type in IF config, uh, we can take a look at the man pages here, just so I can show you the flexibility. So again. Uh, you can play around with all the options that are available, but pretty much the simple way of going about it would be to simply uh, display your current. Um, so if I say IF config, and I'm only looking for my, I can say INET, if I'm only looking for my IPv4 address or my INET addresses, you can see that I can easily just print them out and I also have my net mask. So uh, a very organized way of look, taking a look at your uh, your interfaces and your IP addresses as well. Right now, I'm still to make a video on, on managing services um, and processes with Linux, but uh, essentially working with your network manager, we can also take a look at DHCP because that will be quite important. So if you are running this on Wi-Fi or you are using a wireless adapter or even on Ethernet where you don't have static IP uh, distribution or resolution, what we can do is if you say what is DH client um, and we can just hit enter you can see that uh, if we type in DH client and we hit enter you can see that it doesn't give us any uh, any options here so if we take a look at the options that we are available to use uh, we can pretty much um, let's take a look at the man pages because this is a bit a better way of actually utilizing it so again we can use the DHCP uh, v4 protocol to obtain uh, a new IPv4 address, but in my case, I, I have my IP statically uh, assigned here, so uh, that would not be a wise thing to do. But if I wanted to restart my network manager, uh, again, I'll be making a, uh, an individual video on this, so you don't have to worry. So you can use sudo service network um, network manager um, restart, and I can hit enter, or I can use systemd, so I can say sudo system control uh, we can say restart and we say network. Uh, let me just see network. We're looking for the network manager here. So if I let me just tab and see what we have. 
we're looking for the network manager dot service which is right over here so i can execute this and that will essentially restart it now again as i said if you're not familiar with processes don't worry we'll be covering it in the next set of videos as we uh, wind up this series uh, but that's pretty much how to restart your network adapter if you're having any issues and you can sort of uh, work with that now let's talk about netstat because uh, again that's quite an important tool and i have an i have a, an independent video on how to use netstat if you are interested in it so again we can say netstat and uh, we hit enter let's say print network connections routing tables uh etc etc so i'll just go i'll just go over the most common options you can use and this essentially allows you to understand what uh, what services ports uh, you have running listening and uh, are you are connected to so for example if i wanted to display the route i would say net stat and i would say r and that gives me my routing table so we have the destination uh, the gateway uh, the gen mask flags uh, and the interface here so in all cases we're working with my uh, with my ethernet uh, interface here so you can see that um, for the default gateway uh, we have it right over here, the destination and of course the gen mask. So again, you can get very good information from this. Now, if we wanted to take a look at all the TCP connections that we have, we can say net stat and we use T and that gives us all the TCP connections on uh, that we are currently connected to or listening for on our system. So you can see that uh, we have the protocol, which is very important. This is, this is uh, uniquely going to be TCP. Uh, the local address the foreign address the port it gives you and the state which i'll get to in a second um so you can pretty you can also grab information from this so again you can say grab uh, and if i had the ssh uh, port open uh, i would hit uh, i would say grab 22 for example and uh, it pretty much gives you results based on uh, the actual string of characters in this case it's not giving us anything new but if i was to say um uh, let's say sudo um, sudo serv service ssh start and i'll hit enter um, and uh, if we try and grab this now uh, we don't get anything so let's uh, let's take a look at how to find a listening ports so uh, or listening sockets so we can say net stat uh, l and we hit enter and you can see there's quite a, a bit of listening uh, of sock uh, of sockets that are currently listening for uh, for actual connection so in our case you can see we have the ssh port here and we can pretty much grip uh, with these particular services um and you can sort of work with, with that if you want to uh talking about udp uh, only we can again that's very simple so let's start uh, if i wanted a listening tcp connections i would say um for example lt and hit enter and that'll only display the listening tcp connections if I wanted listening UDP connections, I would uh, type in LU, and again, that gives us all the listening UDP connections. Um, if we want to display uh, the uh, the actual process, processes and the process IDs, we can say net stack uh, P, and we hit enter. And uh, what we can do is we can say LTP. Uh, so LTP, and we're looking for grip SSH, and we hit enter. It again tells you uh, that we have SSH running in. You can go through this all over again. So let me just uh, clear this out. So if we display the results here, um, you can see that it gives you all the information that you're looking for. Uh, so if we get rid of this and we also have P, it gives you the various process IDs. Uh, so if we let's just take a look at the table right at the top here, that pretty much prints it all. Uh, you can see we have the PID right over here and we can sort of grip uh, through that if we wanted to. So that's uh, using um, NetDiscover, uh, sorry, NetStat. Uh, we're not talking about NetDiscover yet, but again, you can check out our, ind our independent video on that and it allows you to check uh, various connections that you have uh, open and you know running either established or listening on your system. They could be for both a TCP and UDP. Now let's talk about NetDiscover. Uh, now NetDiscover does not come pre-installed with uh, any Linux distribution as, as far as I'm concerned, apart from the pen testing uh, or offensive distribution. So again, we can simply just say, what is NetStat? And uh, you can pretty much, um, well, no, not NetStat, uh, NetDiscover. Um, I believe this is uh, it's cover like so, and we hit enter. And it's an active uh, passive uh, ARP reconnaissance tool. Um, so what this means is it allows you to essentially scan your network for uh, for other devices or hosts that are currently connected to your network, whether they be uh, Wi-Fi enabled devices or connected to your uh, to to your network via Ethernet or to your switch. 
Um, so again, to, to install it, you can use any of uh, the package managers you're comfortable with, uh, and we simply type in net discover, and we hit enter, uh, sudo apt get install, sorry, and we hit enter, and you can see already have it installed. So using it requires root uh, privileges, uh, so we say sudo uh, net uh, discover, and then we specify the interface that we want to use, so you can see ENP2S0, and I hit enter, and as you can see, it will start scanning, and it's doing this through ARP, or the address resolution protocol. So ARP uh, request and response packets. So again, it's sending various ARP requests uh, to you know all IPs on the network, and then the responses uh, give us the results that uh, that actually prove that we're, we're, whether we have a device or not. So you can see, um, I currently have uh, the uh, my router, which is running. Uh, this is the default gateway, and then I also have uh, another device running here. Um, let's see if we have any other devices um, and we'll just wait for it to continue scanning So I'll just wait for this to continue scanning. I think I have uh, multiple other devices This is pretty much going to be my Windows device if I bring up uh, a, a mobile device here Let's see if that actually comes up uh, And I'll try and load up a website here. I actually don't have my phone on me But in any case uh, this essentially gives you uh, all it essentially gives you all devices on your network and that's a great way of monitoring your network and viewing what devices you have so again it gives you the ip their mac address uh, and their mac vendor so again it gives you an information about what device you're dealing with so in this case tp link and then honai precision which is pretty much a network adapter and uh, once you're done you just hit Control c and that will terminate the process right over there all right now to end up at or to end this video Let's talk about uh, DNS, which a lot of people actually ask me about. So your DNS information, or your name servers rather, are going to be stored in your resolve.conf file. So again, uh, sudo, uh, sudo, and we'll use vim etsy, and we're looking for the resolve, uh, resolve.conf file, and we hit enter. You can see that this uh, this file is managed uh, by the systemd resolved, uh, and we can, I'll, I'll actually show you how to use that utility shortly. Um, so this is a dynamic resolve configuration file for connecting local clients to the internal DNS stub resolver of system D. So again, it tells you that this is going through system D and this is more of a dynamic uh, of a dy dynamic file that is generated dynamically. And again, it is uh, just for connecting local clients to the internal DNS, DNS resolver with system D resolved. Um, and I'll be talking about services, as I said later on, but uh, many people edit this, which will work temporarily. Uh, However, if you do want to take a look at systemd resolve, that's extremely simple. So uh, what you could do if you want to use this manually is uh, we would actually just uh, add another one here. So I can say name server and then I'll say, for example, go the Google name server 8888. And uh, I can use that if I want to. But in our case, uh, we're not going to we're not going to have any changes here. So we'll just exit. So uh, you can actually check the status of systemd resolve. So we can say uh, systemd uh, resolve sorry resolve um, and uh, we say status and we hit enter and again that gives you uh, the various DNS information that you're looking for so we can print out uh, so you can see the DNS servers that we currently have set are going to be the Google DNS server and uh, this is going through your uh, your actual um, your router or your main gateway so uh, it would be advisable to switch uh, and, you know to any DNS server that you want to do or uh, that you want to use on your main router So you can see that it uses the default one uh, that is your default gateway uh, IP here and uh, The Google IP, uh, the Google DNS server that I have set here and that was simply for the demonstration purposes in this video So that's how to use system D resolve um, Now when talking about your host file this essentially allows you to manage uh, your various hosts and you can use this uh, you know for ad blocking uh, or uh, yeah, you can use it for ad blocking if you want to. So for example, uh, we can say sudo uh, vim and we say etsy and we say host and we hit enter and you can see uh, for example where we have uh, defined uh, the uh, local host or the loopback uh, You know 127.0.0.1 is our local host and then uh, the current host here which is a Lexis workstation is 127.0.1.1 so I could also change that to any other IP I want uh, so if you're going to block an ad, what you typically do is you'd put an invalid IP address here. So I could say 0000, uh, and I could sort of block a website here, like for example, 
I could say google.com, uh, which is not a smart thing to do, but in any case, uh, we can write those changes in exit. And then if I say sudo system uh, control, uh, we say restart network uh, manager, I believe uh, network manager dot service. Um, so we'll just let me, let me just try and complete this uh, for some reason it isn't displaying this uh, system system control network manager dot service and uh, we want to use this so we want to restart the network manager and I'll actually show you this to you right now um, so if we try and open up a Firefox instance here and we say google.com and we hit enter you can see uh, it pretty much redirects us to the local host and um, that's essentially how to use the hosts file. Now I can change the IP to something uh, to something else completely but again many of you have been asking me how to use the hosts file uh, so that's pretty much how to use it um, and we can get rid of that right now because I don't want that to be the case and we can just restart the network manager one more time and there we are so we should be good there all right so that's pretty much all i wanted to cover in regards to networking and all that is important as i said we'll be taking a look at services uh we'll also be taking a look at ssh and if you are interested in in exploring tools like netstat uh, and netdiscover you can check my independent videos they will be linked or you should see a card to them right over uh this video uh, they should be also linked in the description section. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.